Neil Bibby, followed by Liam MacArthur. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that Scotland is the only part of the UK that currently does not have an uh, inquiry into historic institutional abuse. This is obviously not a new issue, and, and as the Cabinet Secretary said, uh, the First Minister, Jack McConnell, gave an apology in 2004. A number of my constituents have been calling for such an inquiry for a number of years, a call which I support. We have already seen millions of pounds spent on reports, frameworks and consultations to look at the best way uh, forward. Given this, could the Cabinet Secretary uh, list and give more details to the Chamber on exactly what he feels needs to be resolved before a final decision on an inquiry can be made? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I, of course, I, I use the term further inquiry advisedly. Uh, there have been two inquiries. There have been a range of reviews and investigations, uh, and there has, of course, been a very active process of prosecution. So I, I'm sure the member didn't mean to give the impression that nothing has happened, because a great deal has happened. It arose out of that um, apology and out of other things taking place. But I would commend to the member the interaction process. This has been a unique process. I regard myself as very privileged as having, although I've only come into it towards the very end, very privileged at, at seeing what has taken place, because it has been uh, quite extraordinary how the agencies, survivors and others have come together to negotiate and discuss a careful way forward. And I'm very struck by this paper that they have produced on an inquiry, which was very late in their process, um, and, and that has changed my thinking. And I think it's extremely important that we think carefully when we are presented with information and evidence. Now, I think the issues that need to be resolved, I've indicated some of them in my, my statement, but they include whether there is any statutory, any law in existence at the moment that can necessarily underpin this different type of inquiry. For example, in Northern Ireland, the members referred to what is taking place in other jurisdictions. In Northern Ireland, there was a specific piece of legislation passed that essentially tailored the inquiry to what was needed. It did not fit into the straitjacket of existing legislation. I think it's fair to say that if you look at the 2005 Act, it is very good legislation in terms of inquiring into things of which you can ask a clear and specified question. For example, how did an accident take place? How did a disaster take place? You can ask those questions. But when you're looking at, for example, issues such as the, the, the public acknowledgement of wrong and the enhancing public understanding, those are not clear questions to be answered. So I think what we have to do is to discuss with the inter through the interaction process how we could shape this inquiry. I also would not commend the approach that's been taken south of the border. There we seem to have had a decision on an inquiry and its remit, uh, which was announced ex cathedra and told to those people who were most affected. And I don't think that's the right way to do it. And I don't think that's how the Scottish Parliament would want to do it. So let's take the time to discuss this and to see what the right way forward is. And that's what I intend to do over the new next few weeks, but I have set a time scale for that, very deliberately, so that I can come back to this chamber before Christmas and, and, and conclude one way or the other and explain that conclusion and to be open to question from this chamber about that conclusion.